In this video, we're solving a conical pendulum variant, and these are sometimes called giant swing problems. The idea is that we have a carnival ride consisting of a giant rotating disc at the top. We're told the diameter of this is 12 meters. Along the edges of the disc, we have chains attached, and there are swings on the end of those for people to ride in. So we're told our chains are five and a half meters long, and that when this ride is moving at its cruising speed, those chains make a 25 degree angle with the vertical, and we're told the rider in this picture has a mass of 72 kilograms. So this rider is going to move along on a horizontal circular path. So at some point we're doing a uniform circular motion analysis. In part A, we're asked to make a complete force diagram for the rider, including the components of the tension. So the two external forces on this rider are the tension in the chain, and we'll call that T, and then the force of gravity pointing downward, and we'll call that Mg. Now, the reason I asked for the components of the tension, I was trying to provide a little bit of a hint when I wrote the problem. It may be tempting to break mg into tangential and radial components, but that's not actually useful for the problem. What we know with absolute certainty is that this rider is going to move on a horizontal circular path. In other words, the vertical acceleration is zero. This means the y component of the tension cancels the force of gravity exactly. And that's why we want the components of the tension. So our vertical component, we'll call that ty, and our horizontal component, we'll call that tx. And so I think part A is done at this point, but I do want to point out how this angle relates to the components of t. So this is an angle of 25 degrees right here, but that's an alternate interior angle with this. So this is also 25 degrees. And that means ty is actually given by a cosine. It's given by t times the cosine of 25 degrees. And tx, that's given by t sine of 25 degrees. So in part B, we want to get the tension in the chain. And here's where we use this physical fact that if someone's moving on a horizontal circular path, the vertical acceleration must be zero. And therefore, the sum of all the forces in the y direction must vanish. In other words, the upward force that I see on this person, t cosine 25, better be equal to the downward force I see on the person, and that's mg. So we find that t is going to be mg over the cosine of the angle. And now we can plug our numbers in. The rider has a mass of 72 kilograms. We'll use 9.8 for G, and this is divided by the cosine of 25 degrees. And when I run the numbers on this, I get 778.5 Newtons, just keeping a little extra precision on that. And if we round to our conventional three significant digits, I can write my answer as 779 Newtons. Now in part C, we get into the uniform circular motion analysis. So we want the period of rotation for the ride. And it's not entirely obvious how we end up being able to find this, but I do see intuitively that the faster this ride goes, the higher the angle is gonna be for the riders. So there seems to be a direct connection there. And of course, to get a handle on it, we just write down Newton's second law. So I can write down F net equals MA, but I need to think carefully about what acceleration I'm talking about. I can see in the vertical direction, there is no acceleration. In the horizontal direction, there's only one force on this rider and it points to the left at the center of curvature. So really what we're talking about is an X analysis of the forces. So I write F net X equals M A X. The acceleration there in the X direction is the center pointing acceleration, the centripetal acceleration for this rider. So what's the net force in the X direction? That's just T sine of 25. We already solved for T in part B, so we'll be able to plug that in when we need it. Then I have the mass of the rider, and then the acceleration of the rider. Well, that's related to the period of rotation. I can write down the centripetal acceleration as 4 pi squared times r over the period squared. We're used to using a t for period. I already used t for tension, so I'm just going to call it p. So now we can move the p squared to the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we have a 4 pi squared r times m over t sine 25. And all we have to do to solve for p is take the square root of both sides. And there's a subtle point here that tripped up a lot of my students on the exam that I put this problem on. r is the radius of curvature of the circular path of this rider, and that is not 6 meters. It's not the same as the radius of the disk. There's a little bit of extra distance here. Well, that's given by the length of the chain. That's 5.5 meters times the sine of 25 degrees. So there's our radius of curvature, and that's going to be the radius of the disk plus that extra 5.5 sine of 25. So I'll just write that here. I get 6 plus 5.5 sine of 25. 
and that turns out to be about 8.32 meters. So now we're ready to plug everything in to our period formula, and we get 4 pi squared times our radius of curvature for the circular path of this rider, which is 8.32 meters, times the mass of the rider, 72 kilograms, all divided by the tension in the chain, and we're going to use our more precise number for this, 778.5 times the sine of 25 degrees. And when we run the numbers on this to three significant digits, we get 8.48 seconds, and we're done. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.